Hello, take a look at these three charts. These are graphics showing a security moving up in an uptrend. Here is one moving sideways, and here's one in a downtrend. Looks fairly straightforward, right? Well, technical analysis is one of those tools that traders use to make investment decisions. What's really important, I guess, for people who've never traded before is to understand the basics. And during Singapore Investment Week, that's just what we're here to do. Along with Jason Tan, from UOBK Hien, where you are in fact an equity sales dealer, which means that you look at the charts every single day, right? Yes, indeed. Why is technical analysis a tool that people can use? What is it about it that makes it useful? Okay, technical analysis is very useful because all you need to do is just look at charts and you'll be able to spot trends. And what the market is actually really looking out for is to actually spot trends and trade on them profitability. But still, don't charts also lie sometimes? I've heard the phrase, for example, that every, every ship that's ever sunk has had a chart on board, meaning to say that can we really trust the charts and the signals that the charts give us? Um, yes, so you're right indeed because nothing moves up in a straight line all the time. So what we actually need to do is that um, for technical analysis, we believe that prices move in trends. And as a result of that, um, if you see there's an uptrend, you will want to write on it. And when you see the market is changing, coming on a downtrend, you have to change your strategy altogether. But is it possible that the market may be moving in a certain way without taking certain factors into account? Maybe there's something that's not yet fully priced in, therefore yet not showing on the chart. Oh, yes, indeed. Because the cornerstone of technical analysis is that the market action discounts everything. So what we're actually trying to say is that um, anything can actually affect prices and is being reflected into the market immediately. So the chartist is actually trying to uh, is believing that market uh, prices move in trends and its objective is actually to spot the trend and to follow it and not to go against the trend. And also to note is that um, he believes that history will repeat itself again and as a result of that if chart patterns or certain patterns that you see on the charts um, have worked well in the past we believe that it will work well again in the future. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's take a look at some of these chart patterns. And in the next uh, five minutes or so, you'll get introduced to quite a couple. So get your pencils ready because we're about to look at the uptrend. Now, this one, I guess, uh, looking at this chart is fairly straightforward, right? The stock is moving higher. But if only it were so simple as to say, I'm going to buy at the bottom and sell at the top, what can the uptrend help you do? Okay, for the uptrend, you can see that it's actually a pattern of rising peaks and troughs. So what you can actually do in your uptrend is to actually buy at the trials and let the market run itself, and then you could consider taking profit at the peaks. All right, and what about on the downtrend? I mean, presumably uh, the downtrend means that you're going to lose money, does it? Yes, on the downtrend, it's actually it's a sign that you should be very cautious and you have to be very careful. If you can do some profit taking off the table, you should do it. So in the downtrend, all you're looking for is that uh, to find key levels of support because it's actually made out of lower peaks and troughs and your aim is to actually sell it at the peak. Are sideways moving markets any easier to deal with? Uh, sideways uh, trading patterns um, is a pattern of horizontal peaks and troughs. It's actually quite interesting to trade sideways because the pattern is fairly predictable. All you need to do is to buy at the troughs and sell at the peak. Okay, so in other words, you can, you can then repeat that because as the stock bounces between support and resistance, you could just, in theory, just keep buying at support and keep yeah, selling at resistance. Yeah, correct, because the pattern actually it repeats itself. All right, now that's the theory. In practice, though, obviously charts rarely consistently move like this um, ad infinitum. There's, there's often different patterns that emerge. And so you've, you've identified the, um, the so-called um, bottom, the rounding bottom and the rounding top pattern for us. Yes, indeed. Okay, so let's, let me introduce to you the rounding pattern. As you can see, uh, the rounding pattern is actually um, starts with a downtrend leading to the formation of the pattern. So on the left-hand side of your screen on the chart, you can see prices actually bridge support and it's trading downwards. And then um, the, uh, the appearance of this pattern looks like a rounded bow shape. And you look at the charts, you will notice that prices continue to fall and begin to gradually rise on the right-hand side. The confirmation of an uptrend rarely occurs when market participants push prices to break above its near-term resistance as indicated on the chart, and then you see a bullish uptrend. Right, and how long do you then ride that uptrend? Um, you can actually ride the uptrend so long um, you are satisfied with your profits, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Right, so you need to set yourself a target beforehand. Yes, presumably. definitely. So you, you get out at a certain percentage gain. Yes, correct even if you leave some money on the table? Yes, correct. <laughs> right. I guess that's the hardest part to do, isn't it? Yes, correct.
but your main objective is actually just to make money. Yeah. And do the charts help you make that decision when to sell? Um, yes, you can actually notice when to sell by looking at the next pattern. The next pattern is actually called the rounding top pattern. So the rounding top pattern, as you can see, is uptrend leading towards the formation of the inverse bow shape, as what we have seen in the rounding bottom. Uh, observing the chart on your screen, you notice that the rally begins to lose strength, causing prices to fluctuate near its near-term support line. Right, and that's, that's when it kind of falls through the floor in a way, doesn't it? Yes, correct. So the rounding top actually forms after several failed attempts for the stock price to break above its recent high. So lacking the upwards price momentum, buyers gradually lose interest in the stock and begin to take profit off the table. As a result, that you see the downtrend takes over, prices begin to dip and break below the near-term support line. Mm -hmm. And looking at the, the bar charts but at the bottom of the screen, how significant are they? They, they show the number of shares traded. Um, yes, correct. The bar charts beneath uh, the screen actually indicates the trading volume. And so why is vo that important? So volume is actually important because it will actually indicate to you the participation of market in this particular stock. So you're looking to trade stocks with high volume instead of low volume. Right, and what happens if you trade stocks on low volume? Um, you may face the risk of liquidity risk, whereby if you want to um, sell away your shares, there may not be a willing buyer in the market. And if there's a willing buyer, the price could be somewhat very, very low. Right, okay. Let's look at uh, the next part of this. I guess it's almost a geometry lesson, isn't it? Because we're looking at triangles next. But there are different types of triangles in the markets. Yes, correct. There's uh, two different types of triangles, as you can see on your screen now. The appearance of a symmetrical triangle is when prices form lower highs and higher lows, following two sloping lines that eventually intersect. Right, and that's what we're seeing here under the word uh, symmetrical triangle. And then there's a breakup on the on the upside, as they like to say. Yes, correct. So as you see, the breakup from the apex would actually indicate that it's actually a bullish price movement. Mm -hmm. And as the trend continues to rise, uh, you will notice that the prices actually consolidate, forming another sort of triangle as we see on your screen. Yep. This is the ascending triangle. Mm -hmm. So it's formed by a horizontal top and an upward sloping line that intersects at the apex of the triangle again. Okay, but again, the question is, what do we use this for? Because arguably, looking at the uptrend, you might say, okay, well, you know, the, the uptrend is intact, even though there is quite a bit of volatility. Yes. Right? So uh, what we notice is that triangles are most prevalent during periods of price consolidation. So what you want to do is that um, as prices move towards the apex of the triangle, the buying and selling forces are more imbalanced. So at this point, it's very easy for new forces to drive price to break up from the triangle apex. So you can actually consider placing some trades near the triangle formation. Uh -huh. With the hope that it'll break up on the yes. upside. On the upside. What so happens if it breaks uh, breaks down? If it uh, okay. falls away. If it breaks down and falls away, you should actually um, determine if the trend is actually still on the upside. So a common rule of thumb is to actually for using a triangle chart patterns is to observe the current un underlying trend. Which in this case is an uptrend. Yes, correct. So as you can see on your screen, the underlying trend is upwards. Therefore, the likelihood of a bullish breakup is higher, signaling the continuation of the, the underlying trend. So in this case, if it breaks down, uh, you still have the confidence that the trend will continue. At some stage, uh, yeah. ho hopefully not uh, too long after that. And I, I guess the other one that, the other chart that we showed at the beginning of this uh, recording was the price channel or the range bound trade. Yes. And once again, you know, I asked the question, can you actually make money in this uh, in this scenario? Tell us a little bit more about how to recognize one of these and also how to recognize when the channel stops. All right. Okay, so you can see the price channel uh, pattern is actually made up of of two lines, as you can see, it's like a rectangular shape. So the upper trend line marks resistance and the lower trend line marks support. So prices will move between these two trend lines consistently for a couple of times before the breakout. So you see the chart on your screen, you notice that the upside potential for this chart pattern often looks limited. Mm. Well, so it's, it's not going anywhere for months, looking at the scale at the bottom. Yes. So a good trading strategy for this pattern would be to purchase the stock as it begins to rebound from the support line and sell near the, near the resistance line. So, uh, but you have to remember that lastly that the chartist objective is to identify and follow the underlying trend. So in this example, you can see towards the right hand side of the chart, prices actually break above the price channel, indicating a very strong bullish rally. So in this example, it might be worthwhile to continue to hold on to the stock or to buy more to write on the trend profitably. 
And, uh, but let me, let me again pick you on the examples, because it's all uh, easy to look at it on a, on a, on a hand-drawn chart, I say, and okay, this is the theory. But there are a couple of things about this chart which don't quite match. For example, if you look at the word price in this graphic that you've supplied under the word price channel, you see that actually the stock breaks below the support. So if you've just bought, actually you'd be sitting on a loss at that point. And then further along, the, uh, the, the stock price actually breaks up above the channel, but quickly comes back down to it. So again, if you've just sold at that point, you would watch the stock move higher, or if you've bought some more, you would, you would actually uh, face that retracement. So long story short, how can you not just pick the trend in the past, but predict that it will actually continue like that in the future? Okay, uh, one way to actually see that it will continue like that in the future would be to observe um, things like moving averages. And moving averages will actually suggest to you what is the underlying trend. So as we can see, the moving average actually starts to not move in a straight line, it starts to move upwards. Mm -hmm. So in this example, um, instead of selling it, you can continue to hold on to the stock because the moving average actually breaks above the price channel. All right, and moving averages are the subject of our next conversation. Thank yes, you very indeed. much, uh, Jason Tan from UOBK Hen. Go to the uh, website that's appearing on your screen now for further information on the Singapore Investment Week, 25th to the 31st of August. I'm Mark Laudy. Thanks for watching.